All right, Brian, why do soybean yields stink? I mean, we talk to farmers all across the country, they say, you know what? My wheat yields have been fantastic, my corn yields have been fantastic, but my soybean yields, well, they stink. Right, they're no better than what they were in the 1980s, and you know, it was fine back then to have 40, 45 bushel beans, but if you're still dealing with 40 or 45 bushel beans, it's a little bit frustrating. Here are some of the things that we've learned. Later today, we're gonna to talk about pre-emerge herbicides. We find now that a lot of farmers are skipping their pre-emerge herbicide. That is a must if you want more yield. You need to improve the drainage on your farm. You need to put some tile in or do something to improve drainage on a lot of farms. I know it's really helped us. You need to do a better job with insecticide, with fungicide. I mean, there are just so many things that you can take a look at with soybeans, but you've got to really heavily manage it. Just think about this. How many times do you look at corn? How much effort do you spend picking corn varieties and determining which herbicide you're going to use and everything else in corn? And then how much time do you really spend on soybeans? We just find that a lot of people spend a lot more time with corn and invest a lot more dollars. And you know what? We haven't even talked about the number one thing yet, and that is fertility. I was just waiting to pounce on you there for missing fertility. That, <laughs> that's really the big thing. And when you look at it, uh, those other crops like corn and wheat that we talked about, people are spending a lot of money on fertility on those crops and thinking, you know, I spent a lot last year on those crops. I'm going to plant beans next year. Man, I can't spend that much on fertility again. They've got to just mine out whatever's left from the other crops. Yep, and you can do that. I mean, soybeans can mine out of the ground, but for that matter, so can every other crop. Here's the problem. If you don't put out enough fertility, basically think of fertility as food. If you don't give enough food to that crop, how well nourished is it going to be towards the end of the year when it's time to produce the grain? I mean, it's not that difficult to figure out. I can just tell you on our own farm, since we started increasing what we did with fertility, guess what happened with yields? Our yields started going up. When you look at a 60 bushel soybean crop, it takes about 84 pounds of actual potassium out of the ground and about 48 units of actual phosphate. I mean, that's a lot of stuff. Most people aren't even putting that much out for their corn, let alone well, their soybeans. Well, but that's is, what a soybean crop takes, just for the grain only. It is a lot of stuff. And when you look, I know we've been talking about the USDA numbers of what fertilizers actually put on each year. Those numbers have not really risen over the last five no. years. They've stayed the same. Guys have been putting on the same fertilizer program they've done last year. And corn yields and wheat yields have been going up. And we've talked about it a lot this spring already in the show that on average, the U.S. soybean farmer is falling way behind on phosphorus and potassium. In other words, he's not even putting out as much as what the crop is removing from the soil. So it's no wonder why we have problems. And ask the guys who have really good soybean yields right now. Invariably, those guys are the ones with manure where they thought they were putting on too much fertilizer. In reality, they were probably putting on the right amount. Yep, and with manure on our farm, I know that's definitely made a difference. And the way you can tell this on your farm, you know, is no, fertility whoa, a big whoa. issue? I, I gotta stop you right there. You can say the manure has definitely made a difference. I completely disagree with you. The manure has made a difference, yes, but where we're putting on that same amount of fertilizer, I mean, we're still doing pretty well too. We've gotten 60 bushel bean yields where we've never even had manure before. So manure is important, but there are other ways around the manure thing. All right, well, I'll finish where <laughs> I was going. What I was gonna say is the way you can tell this on your own farm is just split the field and put a little bit more fertility out. If you say, oh, I don't know if I can afford that on my whole farm, well, fine, let's look at your return on investment. Put on a little bit more phosphorus, a little bit more potassium, do it on half the field, and then see what kind of yield difference you start getting. Maybe you spend an extra 20, 30, $40 an acre, but if all of a sudden you get 10 more bushels of soybeans, even at $7, that's a really good paying proposition. You get a great return on investment. So try this on your farm. Fertility is definitely lacking, and that's one of the biggest causes soybean yields stink. Yeah, and, and we see for phosphorus and potassium, those are the two biggest things that are short, but also micronutrients is an issue too. So look at all those things. Now let's talk a little about fungicide and insecticide. I got a great insecticide story for you, Darren. Right, I, don't even, I don't know if I've even told you this yet. I was at a drainage clinic put on by the University of Minnesota. And you know, University of Minnesota has been talking about this 250 aphid threshold, which we say is totally wrong. It's way too high. And anyway, they had one field that had poor drainage that yielded twice what the field with good drainage had. And I said, what's the deal here? Because drainage, when, when we put tile in our ground, we really gain soybean yield. Absolutely. It's awesome. And they said, 
Well, yeah, but here's the deal. They sprayed one time for aphids way too early on the well-drained field, and they sprayed twice for aphids on the poorly drained field. And you know what the yield difference was? It was over 20 bushels. So when you put an aphid treatment out there at the right time and do it correctly, you should gain quite a bit of yield. I'm not going to say it's going to be 20 bushels, but for as cheap as insecticide is now, it's like four bucks an acre. I mean, you only need a half a bushel gain. Go out there and spray when your aphid count is less than 10 aphids per plant. The 250 number, it's way off. They're dead wrong. It's less than 10 per plant. I don't know if it's as low as what SDSU says at like three per plant or six or something like that. But if you're going out there at the full flower to first pod stage and you see 10 or 20 or 30 per plant, you need to be spraying. Well, I just started thinking when you're talking about the aphids, I was thinking about, oh, I'm going to name some of the other bugs that are infesting our yep. soybean fields. And really, as you move around the country, there are a lot of different bugs, whether it's bean leaf beetles or stink bugs or Japanese beetles or, or grasshoppers. Yeah, the, the list goes on and on. There are just a ton of insects that really love to feed on soybeans. So you do need to take care of insects. You do need to get out there and scout. I know we've gotten a little bit lax in some of the scouting once we had Roundup Ready beans for the last decade and and we're out there, oh, you know, I get to just go out and spray some Roundup, and if I don't get out there this week, I can still kill the weeds next week, and, and for the most part, that's true. So you think, oh, I guess I'll be out next week. I could just throw some insecticide in if I see some bugs. Wrong answer. You need to be looking at those insects. As Brian mentioned, it could be 20 bushels difference just waiting a little bit too long to get something sprayed. So you need to be right on top of things and do some scouting. Well, the timing is important for insects, but it's even more important for fungicide and trying to control diseases. Where we've had the best results on our farm is going out at first pod, spraying a half rate of fungicide. It doesn't cost very much money, and we've gotten really good returns. We actually had one variety a couple years ago. We got a 17 bushel gain on quite a few acres. It was 150 acres or so. So it was a big, big deal to spray fungicide there. But on average, we're only gaining a bushel and a half to three bushels. Still a great return, but not this lights out thing where you say, oh wow, I can really see the difference out there. Well, it's a it's a bigger thing when you get into higher moisture climates too. Yeah. We're, we're on the west end of the Corn Belt. We're talking, you know, 20 to 25 inches of total annual precipitation on our farm. And even if we have a, what we would consider wet year, it's much less moisture than other parts of the country are getting. So if you're in an area getting 30, 40, 50 inches of rainfall per year, you probably need to be using a full rate of fungicide. And you already know it's a no brainer in those kind of environments. You're going to see some disease issues out there, get it treated, but with fungicide, you have to do it before you see the disease. Well, we also mentioned pre-emerge herbicide, but we'll talk about that coming up later in the show. First, can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? 